So in this video, I want to talk about the antidepressants. So first of all, they have all a very common mechanism of action as they all increase neurotransmitter in the CNS, mainly norepinephrine and serotonin. And how do they do that? Well, they all kind of block either reuptake transporters or block the degradation of neurotransmitter. And so that more neurotransmitter are, are available in the synaptic cleft. Another important point that I want to make is that all the antidepressants are quite equally effective. So in order to recommend one specific antidepressant to your patient, you really have to consider the adverse effects because these are the ones that are distinguishing the different classes of antidepressants. The good news is that just by knowing a couple of basic stuff about each neurotransmitter, you can predict a lot of the side effects of the antidepressants. So before we're going to get started and go into the different classes of antidepressants, I want to just generally talk about what is happening if you increase a specific neurotransmitter and what are the effects, because these are the effects that you're going to see then as adverse effects in the specific class of antidepressant medications. So let's start with norepinephrine. So what do you see when you increase norepinephrine? Well, definitely you can increase heart rate by activating beta-1 receptors on the SA node. You can get hypertension by stimulating alpha-1 receptors on the vasculature. You can be agitated and have insomnia if you just think about we're in a fight-and-flight response. What happens with, when you increase serotonin? So definitely you should remember the three S for increase in serotonin. This is stomach upset, sexual dysfunction, and serotonin syndrome. And as a bonus, I've also added one more effect. So stomach upset or all kinds of GI problems are a very predictable effect of increasing serotonin. 90% of the serotonin is found in the GI tract. And there are, for example, 5-HT4 receptors that can be stimulated and increase motility. We have even a drug, a cisapride, which is a 5-HT4 agonist and is used as a prokinetic agent. So you can imagine that you have increased motility, you can get diarrhea. We also know that serotonin can increase nausea and vomiting. We even use serotonin antagonists to prevent nausea and vomiting. Increased levels of serotonin can also lead to sexual dysfunction, and this is mediated by 5-HT2A receptors. I just want to have this detail here because that's going to help you also later to predict some other side effects. You probably also have heard that if you're accumulating serotonin, if you have a lot of serotonin around, there is a very dangerous adverse effect which is called serotonin syndrome and is characterized by, for example, fever, mental status changes, and a lot of other things. Beside the three S that you definitely should know about, there's also increased risk of bleeding because serotonin has inhibitory functions on platelet aggregation, so you would rather find an increased risk in bleeding. One other neurotransmitter that can be increased by antidepressants is dopamine, at least one does so, and then increased levels in dopamine obviously can lead to psychosis and also can lower the seizure threshold, so you're going to have an increased risk of seizures. A lot of the antidepressants that we're going to discuss have also off-target effects, so they also block other receptors. They're kind of the dirty drugs. And I just want to repeat what other receptors can be blocked and what would be the predictable adverse effect. So if you block muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, so you're going to have anticholinergic side effects, dry mouth, serostomia, constipation, urinary retention, confusion. If you block the H1 receptor, that leads to sedation and weight gain. And if you block the alpha-1 receptor, you can obviously have orthostatic hypotension. So let's start talking about the different classes of antidepressants. And I want to start with the most important and widely used, which are the SSRIs, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors. And the name already tells you their mechanism of action. They selectively inhibit the serotonin reuptake transporter. So you're going to have more serotonin levels around. 
What are the side effects? They're all predictable. You're going to have the ones that we listed before for increasing serotonin, and I've just copied them here. And these are the side effects that you're going to see in these medications. What are examples? Fluoxetin, paroxetin, acetalopram, citalopram, sertraline. The names, unfortunately, do not have any common endings. There's one nice mnemonic around which says, I'm so depressed I got the flu, and now I don't get my packs back. And so flu for fluoxetine, and then the packs back for paroxetine, acetalopram, citalopram, and sertraline. This might help you to remember the SSRIs. The next class of drugs are the SNRIs. Again, the name tells you what they are doing. They are serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. So they inhibit serotonin reuptake transporter and the norepinephrine transporter. So therefore, you're going to increase serotonin and norepinephrine levels. And therefore, you're going to have all the side effects for increasing norepinephrine and increasing serotonin that we have discussed before. So for the SNRIs, it is also recommended to monitor the blood pressure on a regular basis as they really can increase the blood pressure and you should definitely not put somebody on an SNRI that has uncontrolled hypertension. So examples for SNRIs are duloxetine, venlafaxine, and desvenlafaxine. Sometimes people call them the DVD drugs to remember the first letters at least of the SNRIs. So let's move on to the next class of drugs, and this is actually a single agent. These are the NDRIs. This stands for norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor. And so again, the mechanism of action is obvious. This drug inhibits dopamine reuptake and the norepinephrine reuptake. As of now, we have only one drug. This is bupropion. And so what are the adverse effects of bupropion? Bupropion can increase dopamine. This is the only antidepressant that is increasing dopamine. So you have the predictable side effects of increasing dopamine that we have discussed before. I also want to mention that there's a black box warning on this drug, that there's an increased risk of seizures. And so you should definitely not give this to somebody with a seizure disorder. Also, I want to mention that we're going to have the same norepinephrine side effect that we have listed before. However, with bupropion, nobody's going to ask you for controlling hypertension on a regular basis. Now you might ask, why do I do it for the SNRIs and not for the NDRIs? They both increase norepinephrine. Well, one way how we can explain that the hypertension is not as severe as for the SNRIs, that there's also dopamine receptors that mediate vasodilation on the vasculature, and therefore this might kind of cancel this effect of norepinephrine out, and therefore there's no blood pressure control necessary. Another point that always going to come up on the boards, for example, is that this is the only known drug in terms of the antidepressant that does not cause sexual dysfunction. So sexual dysfunction as an adverse effect is a big problem in the antidepressants. And this is mediated by the increase in serotonin and stimulating 5-HT2A receptors. So now the bupropion is a drug that does not affect serotonin. So therefore, we do not have any sexual dysfunction. This is certainly a big advantage of bupropion. So let's move on to the so-called atypical antidepressants. So atypical antidepressants, what people normally mean when they talk about this are the so-called serotonin antagonists. Because what mirtazapine, trazodone, and nefazodone have in common, that they are all 5 he 2 antagonists. So we don't really know how much the 5 he 2 antagonism contributes to the antidepressant effect. But please note that mirtazapine is also an alpha-2 blocker. So by blocking the presynaptic alpha-2 auto or heteroreceptors, you're going to get an increase of norepinephrine or serotonin. So that definitely explains how you can increase neurotransmitter by alpha-2 blockade. And trazodone and nefazodone both inhibit the norepinephrine uptake and the serotonin reuptake. So those drugs all have other additional mechanisms of actions. 
These drugs are also all H1 antagonists and therefore are famous in making you very sleepy and also gain weight. And in fact, trazodone is most of the times used for insomnia. Another side effect that is coming up a lot of times with these drugs is priapism, so a prolonged erection. And most of the times you're going to see it in trazodone. This adverse effect is somehow predictable if you think about that all the sexual dysfunction of the SSRIs that we discussed before is mediated by 5-HG2A agonism. Now we're going to have a 5-HG2 antagonist and get kind of the opposite of the sexual dysfunction being a prolonged erection, also called priapism. So let's finish up with the last two groups of antidepressants that are around since a long time and not used anymore so frequently. So these are first the TCAs. So the TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants, inhibit the serotonin reuptake and the norepinephrine reuptake. So these are SNRIs, but in contrast to the DVD drugs that we just discussed, these are dirty SNRIs. They have a lot of off-target effects. So what are the names of these drugs? A lot of them end in triptyline or ipramine, so like amitriptyline, nortriptyline, or desipramine. So let's predict some side effects. So first of all, you're going to increase norepinephrine and serotonin, you're going to have the 3S, and then also the norepinephrine effect that we have discussed before. Again, hypertension is not such a big deal, because as we're going to discuss in a second, these are drugs that have also an affinity to alpha-1 receptors, M muscarinic receptors, and H1 receptors. So you basically have an alpha blocker on board, and this might cancel out some of the hypertension. Therefore, also, there's no regular blood pressure monitoring required. Again, these drugs have a lot of off-target effect, and I've listed the major off-target effects here. We discussed already alpha-1 blockade. You have all kinds of muscarinic effect, and then also H1 blockade, which can lead to sedation and weight gain. So a couple of other things that you should know about the TCAs. First of all, these are the classes of antidepressants that are most cardiotoxic. And again, this is a predictable side effect. They can cause severe tachycardia and all kinds of arrhythmias. So why is it? First of all, you're increasing norepinephrine. This is predictable. We know that. We already discussed it. But also now we are having an anti-muscarinic effect on board. Anti-muscarin. So we're going to increase all the heart rate by blocking M2 receptors on the heart. And then even more, we also have here an alpha-1 blocker. So what happens if you're using an alpha-1 blocker? You're going to get reflex tachycardia. So therefore, we have kind of three mechanisms that can lead to tachycardia. And therefore, these drugs are really very dangerous to give to somebody with any underlying cardiac diseases. This drug also leads to QT prolongation, and it turns out that it has quinidine-like actions. So what is quinidine? You probably remember this is a class 1A antiarrhythmic drug with a sodium channel and potassium channel blocker. So you're going to get QT prolongation, which can lead to toxa, the point. So you're going to have all kinds of cardiotoxic effects with the TCA. All are predictable. So the last class of drugs are the MAO inhibitors. They are not used anymore as a first-line medication. They're only used for treatment-resistant depression, so if you have already tried everything. They are around since a very long time and inhibit the monoamine oxidase A, which is mainly responsible for breaking down norepinephrine and serotonin, and that's a mechanism how you increase norepinephrine and serotonin levels. So what are some examples? Selegiline, the only antidepressant agent that is available as a patch formulation. And then we have also phenelcine and tranocypramine. What are adverse effects? Again, predictable adverse effects based on increasing norepinephrine and increasing serotonin. So something else that you need to remember for the MAO inhibitors are drug-food interactions, which can lead to hypertensive crisis. So tyramine, which can be found in a lot of aged food like wine and cheese, is also metabolized by MAOA. So if you're going to have an MAOA inhibitor on board, you're also going to accumulate tyramine. Well, what is tyramine? T 
tyramine is an indirect sympathomimetic, so it's going to increase norepinephrine. So therefore, because you already increased norepinephrine with the MAOA inhibitors, now you're going to increase it even more. And this interaction, if you eat a lot of stuff which contains tyramine, could then lead to hypertensive crisis. I just want to mention one other thing. So the MAO inhibitors show a lot of times also orthostatic hypotension. And that doesn't make any sense at first because we're always talking about increasing norepinephrine, hypertension, hypertensive crisis. And on the other hand, we're also telling, well, these drugs can lead to hypotension, orthostatic hypotension. So it's in fact true that a lot of people are suffering orthostatic hypotension when they take these drugs. And the mechanism that might explain that is that you're going to accumulate tyramine, and tyramine also gives rise to different metabolites, one of them being octopamine. And octopamine acts as a false neurotransmitter. So it basically acts as the antihypertensive medication methyl dopa. So as you can see, different things can happen to your blood pressure when taking an MAO inhibitor. This concludes the video on the antidepressants.